Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about capital allocation across risky and risk-free portfolios. Asset allocation is a very important part of portfolio construction and refers to the choice among broad asset classes. When I say that, I mean that in this framework, we are not referring to specific securities within each asset class. Rather, our focus is on broad asset class. Before we move on, we also need to ask one more question and that is, how do we control for risk? The simplest way is to play around with the proportions of the portfolio invested in the risk-free asset and the risky asset. Let us say that Y is the proportion that we allocate to the risky portfolio and we have given the risky portfolio a name P which also means that 1 minus Y is the proportion that is allocated to the risk-free asset and we have given the risk-free asset also a name F. If we want to compute the return on the complete portfolio let us write it as RC where R stands for the return and C stands for complete. We can write this as the proportion that we allocate to the risky portfolio that is Y multiplied by the return that we obtain from the risky portfolio let us call that RP. We add to that the return that we derive from the risk-free asset which is going to be the proportion that is allocated to the risk-free asset 1 minus Y multiplied by the return on the risk-free asset. Let's write it as RF. Let us express this equation now in terms of expected return. So if we introduce the expectations operator, we can say that expected return on the complete portfolio is going to be Y times the expected return on the risky portfolio plus 1 minus y times the return on the risk-free asset. There is no expectation involved with it because it's a risk-free asset. Let us manipulate this equation a little bit. Expected return on the complete portfolio can be written as y times the expected return on the portfolio plus we are opening up these brackets which will mean RF times 1 is RF and RF times minus Y is minus Y RF. Now let us collect the Y terms together. So the expected return on the complete portfolio is going to be y we are collecting the y terms together so we write here expected return on the portfolio minus rf and plus this rf here we can rewrite this by rearranging the terms expected return on the complete portfolio is equal to RF plus Y times expected return on the portfolio minus RF. While we are at it, let us also write the risk of the complete portfolio which is given by the standard deviation or sigma of the complete portfolio. You will appreciate that all the risk from this in this portfolio is going to arise from the risky asset because the risk-free asset by definition has no risk. Which means that the risk of the complete portfolio is going to be equal to whatever we invest in the risky portfolio multiplied by the standard deviation of the risky portfolio. Let us also write the variance 
of the risky portfolio. So we are squaring everything up. Y square times the variance of P. From this part here, we can write the definition of Y, which is going to be sigma C over sigma P. Let us keep this in mind. We are going to use this later. Let us now rewrite expected return on our complete portfolio one more time. We have this RF plus we have a Y here which we have defined as this. So let us write that. And then inside the bracket we have this term here. From here we can identify the slope of this line which is going to be equal to expected return on the portfolio minus the risk free rate we can call this the excess return on the portfolio divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio. You may or may not remember that this ratio is also known as the sharp ratio. We also know that risk averse investors penalize the expected rate of return to account for the risk involved which means if the risk increases the penalty should increase as well. But there is a problem. What is going to happen when the return increases with risk? In such a case the best portfolio is not obvious. What do the investors do then? They assign utility scores to various investments. Let us write down a particular investor utility function. Let us call U as the utility. It is going to be equal to the expected return minus one half which we use as a scaling factor and it is arbitrary multiplied by A which we are going to use as the coefficient of risk aversion. This means the more averse you are to risk larger will be the value of A and this multiplied with the variance which accounts for the risk. The issue now becomes how to maximize investors utility by choosing optimum weights for risky and risk free assets. That is how much to invest in risky and risk free asset respectively. Through some calculus we can maximize the investor utility function with respect to Y which is the weight on the risky portfolio or the risky asset. Once we know Y the weight on the risk free asset is simply 1 minus Y. So let us write down our problem. Our problem is to maximize the investor's utility with respect to y and let us write down the ex let us write down the utility function here one more time. Unit utility increases with expected return and declines or penalized because of risk. Now let us substitute in U, let us rewrite the utility function again by substituting the definition of expected return on the complete portfolio which we saw before. This is that definition here. Let us copy this and write it here. 
RF plus Y times expected return on the risky portfolio minus the risk free rate and after that we write the penalty one half times A and we have to write down the variance now which we noted before this was the variance so let us use this now to complete our utility function y square times sigma squared p to maximize the investor utility we need to take the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to y and set it equal to 0 and then solve the equation for y let us do that from this we get nothing from this term if we are taking the partial derivative with respect to y we get expected return on the portfolio minus the risk free rate minus now let us look at this term with respect to y from this thing here we are going to get a 2y so let us write 1 over 2 multiplied by 2 a y and the variance of the portfolio this 2 is going to cancel out with this 2 so what are we left with we have expected return on the portfolio minus the risk free rate minus a y and the variance of the portfolio let us set it equal to 0 once we set it equal to 0 we can take this term to the other side so this is going to become expected return on the portfolio minus the risk free rate which is basically our excess return is going to be equal to a times y times variance of the portfolio we can very easily find out the value of y from here we are going to take this guy to the other side where it's going to get divided this guy is also going to move over to the other side therefore y is going to be equal to the excess return divided by a times variance of the portfolio let us call it y star because this is our optimum weight this is our optimum weight in the risky portfolio P this also means that the weight on the risk free asset is going to be 1 minus y star if we do a graphical analysis according to these weights what we are going to get is known as the capital allocation line let us also briefly mention the capital market line before we close this video we obtain the capital market line when rather than following an active strategy for asset selection we go for a passively held risky asset like the market index the market index is a well diversified portfolio of common stocks therefore the capital market line is nothing but the capital allocation line which is formed from a risk free asset let us say t-bills and a broad market index let's let's say S&P 500 and we can also call it the market portfolio the question is what would be the optimum weight 
for the risky asset in this case. In this case the risky asset is the market portfolio and following the procedure that we just followed here this one here the maximization procedure we can find the optimum weight in the market portfolio. The only difference is going to be that rather than writing this P here let me highlight that for you rather than writing this P here and this P here we are going to write an M to signify the market so we can write in case of, a, of the CML or the capital market line the optimum weight or the proportion the optimum proportion to invest in the market portfolio is going to be the expected return on the market minus the risk free rate divided by the risk aversion coefficient times the variance of the market. This is all I wanted to cover in this video. See you later.